This is the top 35 Flutter widget. Let's start right now with the number one. It will allow you to create a step-by-step -step flow. For the stepper widget, we will start with a current step at zero. Then we add the widget stepper and inside we need to have the steps argument, which is a list, a list of step. Inside the step, we have the title and we have the content. This creates a one step flow. Then we will add two more steps. First, we need to create the onstep taped that will return the new index. We will set state the current step is equal to the new index. When we click on the step, nothing happened. This is because we need to add the current step that equal to the variable current step. Now it's working, but we still need to have the continue and cancel. We then create the on step continue with the condition that if it's not the last one, then we will set state the current step plus one. Now we can click on continue to change step, but we can't use the cancel. To make this one work, we need the on step cancel. The condition, if it's not the first one, then set state the current step minus one. And now we can click on cancel to go back in the previous step. It's a way to fit widgets inside the limited space. We will start with a container. The container will have a width and a height. The color will be red. We will add also a padding of 10 and the child will be a text widget with flutter map. We will create a text style and the font will be 100. The color will be white and the font weight will be bold. But you can see that the text doesn't fit the limited space of the container. To solve this issue, we will wrap the text widget with a fitted box and the text now fit inside the container. And what will happen if we put the height at 50? You see that the text will still fit inside the space of the container. In this video, you will learn how to create a search bar within Flutter. We start by adding an icon button inside the app bar. The icon will be the icon search. We have the on press that trigger the show search. Inside the show search, we have the context and we have the delegate, which is a custom search delegate that we have to create. To build a custom search delegate, we need to create a class that extend the search delegate. Inside this one, we have four main override the build action, the build link, the build result, and the build suggestion. But first, we need to create a list of search terms. For this example, I have created a list of fruits. Inside the build action, we have a return list, which inside I put an icon button with the icon clear. And this icon, when we press on it, will set the query as nothing. This section is to clear the query. Inside the build leading, we will need to create a return icon button. We have the icon arrow back, and when we press on it, we will have the close context null. This will make sure that we can leave and close the search bar. For the build result, we will have a list of match query and we will need to create a for loop of each search item, which is all the fruits. If the fruits that lowercase contain the query that we type on the search bar, if it's the case, we will add inside the match query list, the fruit. After we need to return a list dot builder, the item count will be all the items that match the query. Inside the item builder, we create a variable result that is equal to match query index. And with this, we will return a list style. Inside we have the title that is equal to the text result. The result is the name of the fruit. Okay, that's a lot of information. We need only one more override. To make everything simple, the build suggestion will be the same as the build result. You will see, I will create a list of match query. We have the for loop again, and we have the list view dot builder that have exactly the same thing. And with this code, we have created a search bar within Flutter. This will target the platform and give you different visual of your widget, whether you are on Android or iOS. We will start by adding a slider widget. Inside we will have the unchanged with the new value and the value will be one. And you can add dot adaptive after this slider to target the specific platform. We have also the switch list style. This one have a title text switch list style and a unchanged. I will also add a value through. And you can do the same by adding dot adaptive to show different things on iOS and Android. The next one is the switch. We will add a unchanged and a value through. You can add also the adaptive. The icon is a little bit different. You will need to add the dot adaptive right after the icons. I found also the circular progress indicator dot adaptive. If you find more adaptive widget, please tell us in the comment. When I click on the image, the user visual is never broken. This is an image without the hero widget. And when we change page, you can see that the transition came from the bottom. But let's add the hero widget. 
First, we need to find the first image. So I will wrap this image with the hero widget. And now we need to add a tag inside the first argument. And we will say this as a tag, just like this. It's a string. And then we will find the second image. I will refactor and I will add a widget hero. I need to have the same tag. So I will use also tag. And now if we refresh, you will see that when I click on the image, the user visual is never broken anymore. So the transition doesn't come from the bottom. If you have a flow of data coming from a stream, by example, from Firebase, the stream builder widget will allow you to use the data as soon as you receive it. Let's imagine you have a stream coming from Firebase. I will create a fake Firebase stream. To keep it simple, the stream will wait for two seconds, will display the value one, will wait for one second, will display the value two, will wait for one second and display the third value. You can imagine this as a fake stream from Firebase. And this one is called generate stream. Once we have this, we will create a stream builder inside a center widget. Inside the stream, I will add what we just created, the generate stream. We have also the initial data and the builder. The builder will have the context and the snapshot. We will create some conditions. If the connection state is currently waiting, then we will show a circular progress indicator. If we have an error, then we will display a text error. And otherwise, we will return a text with the snapshot data, the two string. I will make the font size bigger and the stream builder will display the flow of value inside our app. Now we will throw an error after the second delay. And you can see we will receive the first value and then an error. This can be used to select and unselect items. First thing first, we will add the choice chip inside the center of the app. We have the label, which will be a text. And now we need to have a selected variable. We will create a Boolean called is selected. And this one will be set as false. Now we can use this is selected variable and put it inside the selected. We need also to add the unselected to be able to change the value of the is selected. This will give us a new Boolean value. And with this, we can create the set state and change the is selected value for the new Boolean value. And now we have an error because we need to remove the constant and put it before the text. If I save, now we should be able to change the value of the choice chip. You can also add an avatar before the label. For this one, we will use a simple image.asset. And this is how it look with the avatar. If you want to create something like this, I will show you how to do it Inside an empty scaffold, we will create a body with a custom scroll view. Inside the custom scroll view, we have the argument sliver, which is a list. Inside this one, we will add the sliver list with the word sliver inside. After, we will create also a sliver a bar. And inside the sliver a bar, we will add the pinhead, floating, snap, and title. Now we have a sliver a bar. When we scroll down, the app bar disappear and it appear again when we reach the top. And let's talk about the floating. If we put the floating as true, you will see that now, as soon as we scroll up, the app bar will come back. If we want to use the snap argument, we will need to change something inside this lever app bar. I just created an expanded height and a flexible space. You will see this flexible space right there. And because the snap is set as true, as soon as we scroll down, everything will come back. But if I put the snap as false, if I scroll down, you will see the flexible will stay at the same level. Now, if we put the pinhead as true, the app bar will stay, but the flexible space will disappear. This will make sure to put the next element under the first line. First thing first, we need to create an image widget. Next, we need to add a list of this same image. This list will be used inside the row, which have children and the list. Now we have an error because we have the const. We need to remove the const. And if we restart the app, you will see that we have a row of multiple image. To solve this black and yellow issue, you can use the wrap widget instead of the row widget. And this will make sure to put the next element under the first line. This is one of the easiest way to expand a list. 
First, I will add the expansion tal inside the body. I will then add a constant before the expansion tal. You have the title, which will be a text, see more in this case. The argument children will have multiple list tal inside. And just like this, you have an expansion tal. You can also add a leading icon and a background color. As the name said, you will be able to find a time value within the app. To create the time picker, we will need to create a time of the day variable called time. Then inside the center, we will create a text, hour and minute. And I will make the font size bigger. I will then create a floating action button with an icon time inside. Inside the on press, we will create a variable called new time. And this will be equal to await show time picker. Inside the show time picker, we have the context and the initial time, which is the time variable. The show time picker will also return a time of the day variable, which we call it new time. If the new time is not null, then we will set state the time is equal to the new time. And just like this, you have created a time picker within your application. It will allow you to select any given date inside your Flutter application. First, we need to create a variable date time, and this will be the initial time show at the screen. This is the year 2100. After inside the column, I will add a text. The text will show the date time, the day, month, year. I will also make the font bigger. And this is how it looks. Next, we will create an elevated button inside the column. We will add a child text get date and an unpress function. We will add an async for the function and a date time variable called new date. This is a nullable variable. And this new date will await the show date picker. Inside this one, we have the context, the initial date, which is the date time that we have created earlier. We have the first date, which is the year 1800. The last date, it's the last date possible in the calendar. We will also create a condition if the new date is not null, then we will set state, the date time will be equal to the new date. And just like this, we have created a date picker inside the app. This is usually used to create a menu within the app bar. First thing first, we will need to create three string, the title, the first page, and the second page. Inside the title, we will add the title variable. We add also the action. This is related to the trailing of the app bar. And inside, we will add the pop-up menu button. And inside the list, we will have the pop-up menu item. Inside this one, we need to have a child, which we will call text first page, this variable. And with only this code, we already have a list of one item. We will add also the value first page inside the pop-up menu item, and we will add another pop-up menu item. After we need to create an unselected argument that will return a new value. And the new value came from the value inside the pop-up menu item. We then need to create a set state to change the title that will be equal to the new value. And now if we change the pop-up menu item for second page, you see we have second page on the app bar. With this widget, you can select a minimal and maximal value within the slider. First, we need to create a range value variable. This will be a constant range value. This is the initial minimum value and the maximal initial value. After, we need to create a range label variable, which we will call labels. And this is a range labels with the value.start and the value.end. Inside the body center, we will add the range slider. You have the first argument value, that is the range value. Then you have the number of division for the slider. You have the labels, which is the range labels variable we have created. And we have the unchanged. This one will give us a new set of range value that we can set state with the value equal new value. If I restart, you will see that we have our initial value and this is over one. One is the maximal value. And the labels is what we can see on the screen right there. You can use this on any widget to make it visible or not. We start by adding a boolean is visible set as true. Inside the column, we will add the main exercise minimum and a list of widgets. The first one will be an image with a height of 100. Then we will use a second time the same image. And in the middle, we will use the visibility widget with the visible argument is visible. This is the boolean that we have created at the start. Inside the visibility, we need to add a child, which will be an image. After, we will create a nav bar with a title and a text button. The text 
this button will have the on press and a set state inside that will change the is visible to the invert of the is visible and a text saying switch. And like this, you can make disappear or reappear any widget. This is what the bottom navigation bar look like. The first thing we need to add is the current index to know on which page we are. We need to create a list of body that will be all the icons. Inside the body center, we will add the body, which is the list of widget with the current index. And inside the bottom navigation bar argument, we add the bottom navigation bar widget. Inside this one, we need to have the current index that will be equal to the current index variable. When we tap on an icon, this will give us a new index and we will set state this new index by saying current index is equal to the new index, the new button we have pressed. For the items argument, we need a constant list of bottom navigation bar items. And inside this one, we have the label, which will be home, the icon, which is the icon home, and the icon argument with an icon. This one will be home also. I will create two other bottom navigation bar items with the menu and the profile. And just like this, you have created a bottom navigation bar. It's a very simple way to add pages inside an app. Let's start with the page view widget. Inside the children list, we will add the container. This container will have the color blue. Inside the child center, we will just add a text saying page one. We will do the same thing for page two with the color orange and the third page with the color red. The application will look like this and you can slide to change pages. This creates a box that came from the bottom. To create a model bottom sheet, I will go inside the unpress function of the elevated button and use the show model bottom sheet. We will need to have the context and the builder. The builder will return a size at box. The height will be at 400. This is what we have created. I will then add a child center with the elevated button that will have a text close. And when we press on it, the navigator will pop. And when I click on this elevated button, the model bottom sheet will close. This will create a fade animation between two widgets. First, we need to create a Boolean variable set as true. Then we need to create a text button inside the app bar. When we press on it, it will set state the new value of the Boolean and the child will be a text called switch. Inside the center, we will add the animated crossfade with the first child. I use an image for this one, but you can use any widget. The second child is also an image. You will also need to use the crossfade state argument. If it's true, then we will say show the first image. Otherwise, we will show the second image. The duration will be set at one second and this create a flutter fade animation between two widgets. This will make sure that all widgets take as much place as possible. To show you how it works, we will need to create a body center with a column inside. We have the children and one expanded widget. Inside this one, we will have a flex factor with a child container. The color of the container is blue and the height is 200. Even though the height is 200, the widget take all the remaining place. Now we'll add an expanded orange and an expanded red. All three expanded have the height of 200, but they all expand at their maximum. And you can use the flex factor to know which widget will take more place than others. If I change the red container for three, we can see that the blue container take two times more place than the orange and the red container take three times the space of the orange one. This one is like the expanded widget, but does not require the child to fill the available space. Inside a column, we will add a list of widget. The first one is the flexible with a container, a height of 50 and the color blue. And we will add two other flexible. The first one will be a container with the color orange and a height of 150. And the other flexible will be a container with the color red and a height of 150 also. And with this, you can see that each flexible take the height that we gave to the container. But if you remove all the height of each container, this means the flexible is activated if we don't have a defined size. But if we put back all the height and we use the argument fit set as flex fit height, then you can see that the first one doesn't care about the height anymore and it will use the flexible. You can add the flex fit for all of them and now the height doesn't matter anymore. When using the flex fit height, it's the same as using the expanded widget. I will put back the flexible with the flex fit height and I will add the flex argument on each of them. The flex argument act as a ratio to define how much place each flexible should take. This can be used to block the back button on Android devices. For context, I have created another page with a blue background. We will wrap the scaffold with the will pop scope. 
Inside the will pop scope widget, we need the on will pop argument. This is a function. We need to have the async, and inside the async, we will return false. And that means that the back button on Android is disabled. But we have a problem because the back button on the app bar is also disabled. For this, we can create a leading with an icon button, an unpress function, a navigator that pop inside and we can have an icon. This section allow you to use the back button of the app bar, but the back button of the Android device is still disabled. This widget will wait for data before displaying something on the screen. We will start by creating a future string called getData. This one will wait for a future the delay, and the duration will be one second. Next, we will add a throw error, but we will put it inside a comment. I will show you later. And we return the string. This future wait once again before returning the its work string. Inside the center, we will add a future builder. In the future, we will have what we have just created, the getData, and we need also a builder with a context and a snapshot. Inside this one, we will add two if and an else condition. The first one have the snapshot that connection state is equal to connection state dot waiting. It's only to see if the app is waiting for the data. And if it's not the case, we will have the snapshot that has error. So if we have an error, if we are waiting, then we will return a circular progress indicator. And if we have an error, we will return a text with the snapshot dot error dot to string to see what the error will be. And if we are not waiting and we don't don't have an error, then we will return a column and inside the list we will have a text snapshot the data the to string. This will return the data call it it works. Under the text we will have the elevated button, a non-press function that will call the set state and the elevated button will have a text refresh. And you see when I press on refresh, this trigger the get data future which wait for once again and return it works. But if we throw an error and we refresh, this will return an error occurred. The reason is because we have the snapshot that has error to display the error. As the name said, it will create a grid paper inside your app. I will create a sized box with a max height and max width. Inside this one, we will add the grid paper widget. You can change the color of the grid paper, the number of division, the interval, and the subdivisions. Put the color that you prefer and voila, you created the grid paper. It can be used to provide text-based clue for your widgets. This widget is very easy. Let's say you have an image asset. The only thing you have to do is to wrap with the tooltip, add a message, which is a string. You can also add multiple different arguments inside. And when you long press to the image, it will show you a visual clue. Voila, you have used the tooltip widget. This one is used to extend the elements of a collection. We start by creating a list of widget called image list. This will be equal to a list of multiple image. And then we will create a column with this list of widget. And you can see the list of widget on the screen. But instead of putting a column, you could put the spread operator with the image list. This one will extend the elements of a collection and it will do just the same. With this one, you can stack widget one over the other. We start with the stack widget. Inside the list of the stack, we will add a center with an image asset. This image is the Borealis. Next, we add another center with an image asset and a width of 100. And you see that the Flutter map logo is over the other one. With this, you can exactly define where you want to position your widgets. For this example, we will start with a stack widget with a list of positioned. The first one will start left at 40, top at 40. Then the child will be an image asset, borealist, and a defined width. The position of the image is 40 from the left and 40 from the top. We will add another positioned, left 80, top 80. The child will be the same image. Finally, we will do the same thing for a third positioned with a left and a top of 120. And with this, you can position your widget anywhere you want. This will open a box to show the user important things. To create this one, we will start with an elevated button inside the center with a text show alert dialog and the on press function. Inside, we add the show dialog, the context and the builder. The builder will return the alert dialog widget. Inside this one, we have the actions. The text button will be our only action with the on press function navigator.pop and the child text close. This is used to close the alert dialog. Next, we have the title text flutter map. We have also the content padding edge and sets all 20 and the content text this is the alert dialog and with this code you create a box to alert the user if you want to store data inside a table this is perfect for you 
We start by adding a table row variable. This one is a table row. Inside we will put a list of padding. I will add the padding argument and then the child which is just the text. After we will add another padding with a different text and a third padding with a different text. We can now use the table row variable inside a center widget. We will need to add a table widget. Inside we will put a list of table row and inside we will put five times the table row variable. You can add a border table border dot all and you can also add a default column width. This is how the table look at the end. It will allow you to transform anything into a button. First, we start by creating a counter that starts at zero. Inside the center, we add the gesture detector. Then on the untap function, we will add the set state and we will use the counter equal plus one. The gesture detector have a child. We will use a container, but you can use any widget. This will be a box of 200 by 200 with a color blue and a center widget. In the center, we add a text and the text is counter dot to string. We also change the style to be the color white and a bigger size. And like this, you can transform any widget into a button. It's like the gesture detector but with a splash effect. We start with a variable box color set as blue. Then inside the center we add the inkwell widget. The untap function will have a set state which will change the box color to be blue. Inside the inkwell we add also a ink widget. It's a 200 by 200. The color is the box color variable and we use a ink widget instead of a container to be able to have a splash effect. Inside the ink we will add a center with the flutter logo. Inside the inkwell you can add other arguments like the undouble tap with a set state to change the color for red and the on long press to change the color for yellow. This is the double tap, the on long press and the on tap. If you ever wanted to zoom inside an image, this widget is perfect for you. You start by adding the interactive viewer widget. Inside you have the image asset and you can zoom inside an image. But if you want to zoom even more, you can change the value of the max scale and you can zoom even more. You can use the interactive viewer to create something like this. I will show you in the code. I will start with a scaffold and a background color set as orange. In the body, we will have the interactive viewer with the boundary margin argument and this one is set as double.infinity. Inside the child, we will add another scaffold with an app bar and a title. And because the boundary margin is set as infinity, then we can move the scaffold anywhere we want. With this one, you can have a checkbox inside your list style. We start with a boolean variable is checked set as false. Then inside the center, we add the checkbox list style. Inside, we add a title and the value will be the is checked boolean. The unchanged will return us a new boolean value, which we will set state and set the is checked value to the new value. This is the most basic option. You can also add an active color and the check color in order to fit your design. The control affinity is used to change the position of the checkbox. The tile color can also be changed and you can use the three state set as true to set the checkbox as checked, null or empty. There is also a place for the subtitle inside the checkbox list style. With this, you can now select text within your app. To create this one, we will start with a string selected text. We will use this later. Then we need the string selectable text and this is a selectable text. After we will add two text style, a style blue, which have a font size, a font weight and a color blue and another text style, which have a font size and a font weight. With this, we can start with the selectable text widget and we will put the variable inside. With this, you can select the text in the app. After we will create another text inside the column, the selected text will have the style blue and the selectable text will have the normal style. We can also add an argument called on selection changed with the selection and the cause. Inside you can set state and change the value of the selected text by using the selectable text substring the selection.start and selection.end and this will show on the screen what we have selected. You can also wrap the selectable text with the text selection theme. Inside you add the data which is the text selection theme data and you can change the selection color. The color is now yellow. If you want to learn more about Flutter, you can check our Flutter course in the description. And if you want to see more Flutter tips, you can click the playlist available on the screen right now. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.